Welcome to Eric's Perspective. Uh, joining me today is Avelia Jones, arts educator, arts yes. advocate, yes. friend. Yes. Thank you for joining us. All the above. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I thought we would get started by basically describing to the listening and viewing audience uh, how we uh, first met. As I recall, oh, it was okay. through my gallery in Santa Monica. Yes. Is that the way you remember? I, it is. It is. Yeah. I don't think I met you before that, but uh, I've, I've, I was a person, and I still am, uh, who wants to see all the galleries and all the places where art can be found. And um, yours was beautiful compared to many. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. You. It had, a, it had a, what do you call that thing that yeah. drops out? Uh, oh, okay, this shows my age. Okay. No, please. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to call it an awning, but... Uh, I was very attracted to it. Oh, you talk because yeah, we had a we had actually two awnings on the outside. Yeah, of the there you go. It is an awning that had the uh, that had the gallery logo on it. I said, "How pretty! Wow, look at that!" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you stood you stood alone in that category. I'm like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Main Street in Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah, that, that takes us yeah. Back. I thought it was elegant and beautiful, and I'm attracted to that. Thank you, uh -huh. thank you very much. Yeah. So also, uh, maybe we can just also start out by uh, talking mm -hmm. about you first. Um, obviously, your, your dad is, a, is an artist. Yeah. But before we get to him, yeah. I, just want, I just wanted to talk a little bit about you. So okay. uh, <laughs> how did, you're an arts educator. I, I am. So when you taught art, at what level were you teaching it? And what was it that you were teaching? Okay. I was teaching art education for children. So Art for Children is kind of how I got into it in the first place. My mother taught that at Jackson State University in Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, she was uh, a teacher under my father's direction who uh, headed the art department at Jackson State. So that's, that's the story there. Um, my mother, a Cuban, I like to say that off the top. And my dad, a person who came to Jackson State uh, by way of several other black colleges, um, Fort Valley State, uh, Dillard. Um, uh, and he had come to that from Chicago, New York, and he started in Virginia. His birthplace. His birthplace. Um, I'm fascinated with Virginia in a way because... Um, Lynchburg sounds uh, nasty. Well, you got the word lynch in there, so <laughs> yeah, right away. Right. To begin with. Makes you kind of scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but to soften it a bit, um, my father grew up in a house. He was born in a house uh, in Lynchburg, way at the top of the hill. And uh, that's not a normal thing for an, a black family. For Negroes, as they called it then, which was fine with me. Um, but at any rate, um, too big a house. And so I said, Daddy, what is this? Because every winter we were there. And my grandmother was an awesomely big woman, tall and strong. My grandfather, on the other hand, short and black, like blue-black. Mm. Oh, wow. And uh, the two of them, a couple to see. But my grandfather, I love dearly, uh, my dad's father, he was a singer, a vocalist. And uh, I was attracted, like, wow, you know, so I could sit at his feet often, and I loved to go to Virginia. Hmm. So I found out that this big house wa was the real pass down of the Hemings family. And the Hemings had come by way of Sally Hemings, that name. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, Monticello, all of that. So, you know, we were kind of strange folk uh, from the beginning. My dad, the oldest of 12 children. Your dad was the oldest of 12? Yeah, that's a lot. Huh? Wow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was sort of a child prodigy, they said. Um, as, a, as a visual artist. You yeah, mean. yeah, yeah. And um, by the time, well, as a vocalist, too. Interestingly. So he sang. Yeah, like his father. Mm -hmm. and, and dad trained him and the next three stu uh, kids in the family to sing gospel music, uh, spirituals. And that's how they brought a little money to the house. So your grandfather sang spirituals? My granddaddy was amazing. Mm. Yeah. And, and matter of fact, um, I remember in the 50th uh, anniversary between... <laughs> My grandfather and, and my grandmother in Virginia, 
my grandfather all dressed all nice and my grandmother in gold. And he sang to her in front of like maybe a good hundred people, uh, Be My Love. Oh, wow. That sounds very yeah, that moving. Was something. Uh, you know, so um, we were always expected to perform in the Jones family. You as well? Me, yeah, sure. So I performed all right. I got whippings for it too. No, no. <laughs> yeah. so, so a different kind of performing. A different kind of performing. The wrong thing. So, so did you sing as well? Uh, I did because I had to. That was expected. Ah. Yeah, so, you know, I wasn't afraid of singing. But um, it's very hard to match Daddy and his three brothers and his sister Esther. So, you know, uh, that was my exposure to music first. Mm -hmm. um, at any rate, to move on, uh, my daddy early in his life had to leave the house in Virginia and make some money because there were children in the house by then. Uh, there were about six or seven. You mean his younger siblings? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, he went on to the Catskills and was a waiter and made a little money and met some people and he drew pictures and they liked them. Um, he was exposed to some early art training in addition to his talent mm -hmm. in Lynchburg, Virginia. So that's interesting to me. Well, I wanted, you brought up, uh, we might as well explore it since you brought it up about Sally Hemings. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, she is um, the, uh, shall we say, mistress of uh, Thomas Jefferson, the third uh, president. That's how a lot of people want to look at it. And I think the more I was exposed to the story, I said, yeah, mistress is a good word. Um, but I think he actually loved her. I don't think well, any man uh, has babies with anybody six times. Well, I was going to say he had he had <laughs> six like children. Southern with you. Six children with her. <laughs> yeah. And she was actually the half sister of his deceased wow. wife. Correct. Come on, come on, come on. So I said, this is this is a story that is a real story. Yeah. Uh, it happened, and I'm privy to it because um, we all knew it was true. Well, share that story. I mean, can you talk a little bit about yeah, it? Actually, yeah, yeah, we, and we, we should also bring up the fact that in uh, January of 2019, yeah. that there was a uh, uh, an op-ed piece you had uh, yeah, authored yeah. with someone else yeah. talking about all this. Yeah. But can you can you share that story with us? A little bit. That uh, what I know is um, <sighs> Sally Hemings uh, down the road comes my grandmother, Nanny. And uh, Sally... I didn't, I didn't see any bad thing about it because um, all the stories I ever heard were that she was favored. And, of course, we know the story as, it to as it's told now, sort of, is that she got to go to France. and uh, To be with uh, Thomas Jefferson, right? Yes. He, he called her in. I'm, I'm familiar with that as a real story, that men do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Sometimes they like a woman. <laughs> and, and it might not be the, the one they're married to, but she was very much like his wife. So at this time, was, he, was his wife alive? No. Or? Okay. No, she had died. And um, I think that Nanny being a half-sister and very white in appearance, because the stories we see a lot is that, oh, a black woman, why? But uh, that wasn't the most obvious thing you saw when you saw Sally Hemings mm -hmm. when she was young. She was Especially, young. Yeah. You said she was very fair. She could yeah, pass. She was very fair. She, could you, would you say she could pass for white? We call it passing. Passing, right? Yes. You're very familiar with that in the <laughs> black community. <laughs> so she was one of those. Okay. And uh, in, the, in the family. Uh huh. So there you go. You know, I was okay with that. And what's wrong with the story, anyhow? Nothing, uh, in my opinion. But you'd be shocked after that op-ed in the LA Times that I wrote uh -huh. with a friend uh, who said, hey, Felia, get that story. Uh, out there, uh, I ran into the uh, word troll. I always knew what a troll was as a child, but now I get a different troll in the modern times. So wait, you were criticized for Ooh, it? Oh my goodness. I was like, ah, I'll never do that again. Oh but no. No, that's what? not true. So what happened? I mean, what? well, a lot of comments by email of, you know, you ought to be ashamed. What would you should be ashamed of? Of writing a story about a a black woman, and, and Thomas Jefferson, our founding father. I said, well, Thomas Jefferson was a strange uh, guy. He was an interesting cat. Well, <laughs> well, and it's not, it's not something that you made up, though, right? No, I mean. no. And uh, I thought nothing of it other than 
She was on that plantation. She looked like his wife and was in the family. And hey, a good nanny too. And a, and a mother of six, six of his of children. His children. Right. So somehow I know they, got, they, they, they liked each other, I would say. Yeah. Right. And I, I have no problem. Uh, I, I'm uh, astonished, though, that it becomes an issue of, you know, racism. It's like, why would you care who Thomas Jefferson slept with and had babies with? Why does it matter to you? Uh-huh. What does it? What skin does it take on? What, what did they say? What? Why it matters to them? It just isn't true. It ain't so. And I said, well, okay. They, uh, they accused you of lying. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Did you get a variety of yes, responses? I did. Though I did, did way too many. Did you get? Did you get any on the other side that said, "Thanks for telling the story"? Actually, not. No. No. All of it was was nasty, dirty. So uh, I have never. You know, it's interesting. Okay, since we're talking. Yeah, no, it's, let's talk. it's never been a thing for me, uh, the father I had, the family I was brought up in, that um, we care to bring anyone down because of who they love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because my dad had a little bit of a problem with that one, too. Um, my mother was a very fair skinned uh, Cuban and not readily accepted in Jackson, Mississippi the culture that was there. There were a few people. When you say not accepted, you mean because she had... uh, Too much light skin and too much hair. So this came from the black community. Yeah. yeah. I like to tell the truth. No, please tell the truth. And the truth is that, um, in general, they didn't know who she was. They didn't know. They they couldn't figure it out. It didn't fit into anything socially. Uh Yeah. So uh, my mother stayed at home a lot. Because she was afraid. Yeah. And, and spoke a language and had a culture that they didn't know. They weren't bad people, but they just weren't familiar with, who is that? And they called her Senorita, and they told her she should... In a demeaning way. Yes. yes. And this is the truth. Oh, wow. And um, my daddy stayed busy because he was a busy guy, and he was friendly, and he was funny, and he had a lot of talent, and he had a, a, a job to run an art department. So um, in, in, in doing that and also lecturing about African-American art, which was not a very common topic at that time. Mm-hmm. There were a few right. who did that. And he was in the South, which made it awfully peculiar. The Deep South. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But um, he knew a few good people because he had met them in Chicago. He had met them in New York from whence he came. Mm-hmm. So um, he brought them to the South as a, a friend thing, mm-hmm. you know, as I might do with you. If I knew you and I was young and ran something, I would say, hey, Eric, can you come down and talk about African-American art? And you might say yes. So he got a lot of great people. John Biggers, Elizabeth Catlett. Um, what's the man who did the migration series? Um, Jacob Lawrence. Jacob Lawrence. Um, those people came easily. hmm uh, for one thing, it was not a bad lick for them because not everybody needed them in the world at that time. Well, now we're talking about, what, the 40s? And yes. That, a period where colored-only well, signs are all over the and, place. And, and wait a minute. Uh, the 1950s, early 50s, mm-hmm. yeah, and the civil rights movement brought them again because it was kind of a good strike to show up. What I wanted to ask you, though, you, just going back to your mom and your dad yeah, being together, yeah. so that sounded like uh, the fact that she was a light-skinned Cuban yeah. and he was a black man yeah. in Mississippi was a problem. How did he deal with it? Uh, well, um, I, don't, I think he was so proud of her. I think he loved her, actually. Um, he was, uh, I don't know what love, you know, love is an interesting topic to me. What are you talking about when you say love? Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Um, in their case, my mother had come to the United States as what they call a novitiate. What is that? A novitiate comes from the Catholic life. And in Cuba, she got a chance to come to the United States and go to Fort Valley State as an exchange student. And my dad was one of these guys who, you know, hey, I love everybody kind of people. So uh, he was the foreign student advisor. 
And um, at Fort Valley State, the only other famous thing going on had been Lena Horn, one of the students. She was a student at <laughs> yeah. Fort Valley State? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, they, they weren't known for much else other than that. Well, that's a lot to be known for. It Lena was. Horn, one it of was. the most famous singers it out was. there. It was. And um, my mother was one of these women who we as a culture, black folk, allowed anybody fair-skinned with hair to be considered the pretty ones. We weren't really trying to reach too deeply into other kinds of beauty. And my dad was all about that, other kinds of beauty, mm. the black, the Nubian. Mm -hmm. So um, mother in Mississippi was a new thing, an odd thing. Did she have uh, Afro roots? Was she Afro-Cuban or she was just uh, uh, more, Indian. more Indian, more Indian. Uh, I was you just didn't curious. see any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, in coming into the United States, uh, she embraced black and African quite well because she was well educated and uh, she's a great girl, mm. great woman, great mother. Um, she taught me more about America and the language and reading and writing and wanting to be somebody mm -hmm. than anything I was exposed to in the city at large. My mother at home. Was she an artist herself? Yes. Yes. Uh, and what was her favorite? She specialized in home economics. And so anything you made with hands, uh, leather work, tin work, paper work, you know, as Japanese might do, this kind of thing. You know, one of the first stories my mother told me was about a Chinese uh, bakery in Cuba. So she knew a lot about Chinese things. Wow. Yeah. So um, I was an oddball in that respect because I'm always looking for something else. I didn't worry about black so much. Mm -hmm. But as I grew older, it was, a, it, was a, it was a thing that I took for granted. It's like, oh yeah, you know, what about the Africans? You know, he said, girl, you know, <laughs> it was more about R&B, and, 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 and that was great, too. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but the strange thing is, I looked like my daddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is odd, you know, because I felt like my mother. <laughs> well, see, there you go. You had both of them. <laughs> I didn't know what to both do. Both of them surging in, I didn't in know your what system. To do. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. But um, I loved it, and thank God, um, because that's who I am. And so I love the art. If, if the art starts looking European, or if it starts being something else, you're Caribbean, I'm like, yay. And people say, girl, you know, what's wrong with you? So wait, are you an artist yourself? Yeah. And what yes. is your favorite medium? Medium? Uh-huh. What do you um, Painting, actually. Um, actually, uh, it turns out my favorite medium tends to be fashion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, clothing. Okay. I love it because it involves color, texture, all these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find that one of the great uh, jewelers was somebody who was black and Cuban. And who was that? Uh, George Smith. I'm not familiar with that. Oh, we gotta, one day. Okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, got a chance to know a lot of things and see a lot of things and feel a lot of things. You mean growing up? Growing up. In, in Jackson. In Jackson. Yeah. So you grew up in Jackson, Mississippi. I did. Pretty much. But somewhere, somewhere around mid school, middle school, which we would say maybe ninth grade. Um, some man comes from Switzerland and he says to somebody, a, a, a counselor, he says, I'm going to meet this Avelia person. And I said, well, I wasn't there, but they said, oh, you don't want to meet her. Why do you want to meet her? Because I was big trouble. I had been trouble in... <laughs> when you say trouble, what do you mean? <laughs> I didn't behave. I wasn't good. So you were, you were all the time in the principal's office? All the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, for talking too much, for running off with the boys. I love the boys. Oh, wow. Yeah. So but this is what? Uh, eighth, ninth eighth grade? Eighth grade, ninth grade. Catholic school. Wow. Catholic school. Okay. Yeah. Uniforms. <laughs> so back to this man from okay. Switzerland. What yes. was that all about? He said uh, her standardized exams are off the chart. Okay. Um, and they were. But 
we weren't Jack and Jill, which was a, a social organization uh, for blacks. We weren't too into what social black was. In other words, you weren't bourgeois. You weren't bourgeois. Exactly. But my daddy could do the bourgeois thing. He could turn it on and off. Yes. Yes. And that was fun. My daddy was actually a bootlegger (laughs) from Virginia. (laughs) He made made beer and wine in the cellar. (laughs) But the cellar out of a GI home that we were in, (laughs) GI Bill house. Because your dad was in the army. Come on. And that was a big part of his, his story. Yeah. Yeah, how the Army moved him around, and he was a CEO, a conscientious objector. And that's because he was all about... Well, wait, how did he end uh, up in the Army if he was a conscientious objector? No, he was drafted. Uh, and he and his cousin from New Orleans, uh, Harold Winslow, I don't know if you've heard about the Winslows in New Orleans, but they were interesting people. Huh. And those guys, and my dad, and Elizabeth Catlett, knew each other. Um, and my dad was convinced by his cousin, Harold, to let's be conscientious objectors and get out of this world war. We don't believe in war, do we, Jones? And this is during World War II? Yeah. So um, off they went. Uh, CO, bad news. They went to Mexico. And that's how my daddy met the folk that he met. Uh, meaning like Elizabeth Catlett. Elizabeth was but, there because with I, Mora Poncho. Uh, right, her yeah. husband, uh, yes. Francisco Mora, yeah. at the Telegraphica. Yes. And he studied, he studied there yes. with them. Yes, and yeah. then he met Siqueiros and Anna Orozco. Oh, okay. So that was interesting. And so he knew it. That must have been a wonderful experience it for was. him. It was, and it made him a little more secure in what he felt about peace and war and about uh, militancy. So he escaped military service by going to Mexico. Yes, for a while. Because ultimately he did serve in the military, as I understand it, right? Yes, he did. He did because his big thing was still being the oldest of 12 children that his mother had. He had to set an example. He had to set an example. He had to send home money. Because oh, after all, that's more he's than a setting money maker. Example, yeah. <laughs> my, my granddaddy's a singer yeah. and he's an aging singer at I this see. point. I see. He yeah. had to be kind of a breadwinner. Yes. But back to this guy in Switzerland, though. Yeah. So whatever happened to that? Now I'm curious because well, okay, you so raised Well, okay, so the guy that. in Switzerland wants to meet Evelia. And they're going like, no, she's weird. She's strange. She's awkward. Awkward, the good word. And um, I wasn't. But I didn't behave. I was a behavioral challenge. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, this man from Switzerland wanted to meet the person making these scores on standardized exams. Okay. ACT, SAT. Who is that child? So they said, uh, yeah, okay, we can meet her, but we've got other people. So we want to meet. So so what was? Because he had money. He, he was, was a philanthropist. He was he offering was, a grant. Basically. Yes. To go was, to college. To go to another school, to get out of the South, to see what uh, those grades could do. Because he was a part of an organization that was looking for minorities who could achieve. Oh. And so did you go? Yeah. And Scarsdale. That's how, I, that's how I ended up in Scarsdale, New York. Scarsdale, New York. Wow. Yeah, that was strange. What an odyssey. That's it fantastic. Was, it was. And so, <laughs> so what did you, so now you're in high school? Yes. I'm in high school. I'm in Scarsdale, New York, and I'm the daughter, only child of these two, yeah. Lawrence and, and Maria. Yeah. And I am there during the time of the age of Aquarius. So we got high. We, you know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, rich kids, Jewish. Right. They now, had, that's interesting. Okay. That's interesting because <laughs> I was uh, brought into the Jewish world. Okay. And they had money. They were not just Jewish. Well, you're in Scarsdale. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. wealthy area of, it of was, New York. Right? It was. So it was an experience. And boy, oh boy. And so, wow. and so. So basically, you went to high school mm-hmm. in Scarsdale. I did, and because he chose me, and you finished. I did, and then where did you go from there? And by the way, what did you, did you have a specific focus while you were uh, in high school at Scarsdale? Rock music, 
<laughs> rock music and a little marijuana, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 anything uh, in theater, I loved. Okay. And um, whatever rich people did. So that's a broadening. That's a huge highway. So you you had a whole nother yes. uh, eye opening Exposure. experience, yes. like a, a cultural it and was. and sort of a class. It was, and I wouldn't trade it for Exposure. anything. Yeah, it's exposure, right? It was a great life. And how did your parents feel about that? Their only child going being recruited up to all the way from Mississippi up to well, uh, New they York. They wanted me to make the best of it and to use it well. Almost worked. You said almost. Almost. Because it, um, for some reason, while I was in New York, um, and I have my theories, I became known as, well, I, 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 okay. I went to Boston with my boyfriend. Okay. Right. And we were out there hanging out. And uh, I was so secure about going to Yale. That's what, that's what was my life. It was going to be that. Mm-hmm. But um, it turns out I fell down in the streets of Boston one day. And this was after Woodstock. This was after a lot. I was trying to graduate. And they found out I was diabetic, type 1. What? Oh, wow. Oh, God. So you you collapsed from from having the... uh, I did. And so that starts another life uh, for me. But in the meantime, I'm looking at art. I'm looking at... All the things I've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. So I ended up back in Mississippi for the civil rights movement. That was crazy. Wow. And this is now what, in the 60s? Yes. Okay. A dangerous time. Yes. But I, uh, because of my classic rock background now, am (laughs) able to get a job in radio. Oh. So I go into something called WJDXFM. In Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a show. I have Drive Morning Show. And wow. my God, how much fun was that? It was. Wow. It was. And so what, what sort of, uh, it was a music station. Yes. And you were playing what kind of music? Mm, classic rock. And I blended a lot of Cuban stuff. Yeah, oh boy, my show won every every sweep. Oh, <laughs> was, that's fantastic. Yeah, because the forgive me, the white folk loved it. Yeah, right. Right. It was blues. It, yeah. It was uh R and B. Probably younger oh, yeah. folks, I would yeah. imagine. But I got the young folk, but I got the people who wanted to hear classic rock and anything I did. And they didn't know I was black. Uh-oh. Radio, radio. Right. Yeah. Good King Flower Bisc- Hour. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what a what, mess. What, that was the name of your program? Well, no, that was with the kinds of tapes we ran. Oh. Yeah, on Sundays. So they say, who is this woman? And, and so I what, had a great time. So was the show a daily show, it seven was. days a week? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, two years of that. And it was run, it was owned by a company called the Hederman Brothers. The Hederman Brothers were like the Koch Brothers. They had a grip on everything that had money in Jackson. Oh, wow. So people want to know, girl, how do you know these people? How did you get to know the governor? I said, because Joy Waller, Bill Waller's daughter, is my friend. So wait, you should explain who those people are. The governor of Mississippi at that time. Okay. Well, you were in on the know. I mean, I was. And it just happened like that. You know, life is like that. Right. Yeah. And meanwhile, your dad's still at Jackson State. <laughs> yes. yes, going head, like, of, hey, head, of, head right. of the art department. Right. And he loved me. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So he accepted me as I was. Excellent. Yeah. And how about your mom? Nervous. Like, oh, my God, if you would just straighten up <laughs> <laughs> and fly right. Yeah, but I never. So she didn't necessarily approve of you being no. a DJ <laughs> playing well, rock you know, music. It wasn't so much that it was the DJ. She liked that part in a way. Okay. But she didn't like the fact that I was straying away from norm. In other words, uh, you know, she wanted me to be a good girl. Not a not a flower child, basically. Right. Forgive me for Come on, Eric, help me. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's what it was, and that's what I didn't do. I stayed a flower child. <laughs> and so how did you end up in L.A., though? Wow. 
Now that's a good one. I came here with a pro football player. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. And because at that time I wasn't like bad looking, I had a lot of hair and and I was still a flower child. And I knew a few things. I had an education and I was theatrical. Um how did I end up in LA? A pro football player. Who played with the Rams, maybe? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was crazy. But, again, what a life. I loved it. Yeah. So you wouldn't, looking back on it, you wouldn't change anything? Wouldn't change a thing, except I would get a college degree, I would get a PhD, while it was easy, while it was a piece of cake. I would have done those things differently. I see. So when people say, ah, oh, you know, but I said, no, I would do some things differently. Sure. So you would have pursued. So did you? Did you ultimately get any any degree? Yeah. Okay. But um, but at a time much later than you. Yes, looking back on it. Yes, it was difficult sure. to do compared to young. I see. And uh, well, I met you, and I met a lot of people in the art world out here. Yeah. And uh, that's what I sought to do, because that was what I loved. Well, what drew you to arts as an educator? Well, <laughs> uh, oh my God, I'm leaving out a lot of things. Um, I got involved with filmmaking, you know, um, oh. movies and all of that. You mean in Hollywood? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I had done that in Mississippi, the Mississippi Film Commission, and a lot of movies were made in Mississippi because that was the black exploitation film world. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was involved in that, and um, when I came to L.A., I came to L.A. in film. But anyway. But then you transitioned, though, I to did. visual art. I had to because uh, film wasn't being made in Hollywood exactly the way I was trained to work it. Uh, they weren't looking. Well, actually, actually, there was a strike. And my mother said, if you don't come home. Home now being Mississippi, Mississippi right? But I didn't want to go home. So uh, I started teaching school. I had a degree and I used it. So, so when you were teaching art, were you teaching it from the perspective of producing it or uh, appreciating it, or both? Both. Both. And you know, and 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 again, I would meet you because I would find that a lot of people in art education in LA didn't know too much about black art. Right. So I was unique. And I brought my classes to your gallery. I, I recall you know, that. They were like, wow, girl, how do you know him? It, I'm like, please. <laughs> 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 I, you know, because for me, um, you were the best. You had a great gallery and you. Uh, you had great shows. Thank you. Thank and, they were the kind, and it was the kind of art that I understood. Yeah. So, I mean, I understood all of it, but this is what I believe. You grew up with a yes. lot of it, right? This but, is what I loved. Because as you mentioned, uh, your dad was friends with Elizabeth Callot. Yes. Some of the artists that I was showing at the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it was not a, a strange thing to me. Right. And um, I, it was, okay, I don't know how to say, um, but I'm so, gra I'm so grateful that that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Where's the mic? Okay. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, well, you know, I wanted... Oh, we could talk. Good yeah. Lord. No, no, let's keep talking for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I wanted to touch on your dad's uh, yes. artwork, if yes. you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Just for a second, because we, we've been talking about him sort of obliquely yes. as his friendship with um, Catlett and some of the others. And his right. t he attended the Telegraphica in Mexico. Right. And uh, he was the he was art instructor himself. Yes. Head of the art department at several different universities, the yes. last of which being Jackson. Yes. But he was himself an artist. Yes. And, and, and probably, would, is it fair to say, um, didn't really get the kind of notice he should have gotten? A uh, very unsung because he was busy teaching. And, uh, you know, it's a sort of a category, I think, that I find a responsibility to. Because I want to talk before I die, before I'm done in this on this earth mm -hmm. that we know. I want to talk about those artists in who 
ended up teaching in the historical black colleges and universities. Uh, they didn't have something, but they had something else. And they... Well, what, was, what was it that they did not have? Well, you know one thing, um, I don't know how to describe that, but when people love art, I don't know if they always know what they're looking at. So what attracted a lot of commercial success for some was not only a talent, but it was a drive. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was something that happened for them. And there were other people who stayed in those trenches and taught. And there's always a bad story about, hey, you know, those who teach couldn't. But that's right. not true. Right. It's just what they did. And it's what they wanted to do in, in many cases. Uh, the, the public, well, the university level, the teaching. And they were happy. They did what they loved. And would your dad fit that category? Yes. Because the school that he was the head of the art department of, Jackson State, is a historically black university. In the end, that's where he ended up. Uh, but he had been in several. Yeah, Dillard as well. Dillard. Right. And you know, it's an interesting story. I don't know if you agree, because you know, you were uh, familiar with all of the, um, the artists. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing is, Elizabeth Catlett ended up that happened. My daddy went to the went to the army, mm -hmm. and he said, "Elizabeth Dillard, that's you, girl." And she was there for a while, right? Yeah. So you know, there's always an interesting story, and I, I think a few writers uh, don't know the answer because it's like, did Elizabeth start Dillard's art department, or did Daddy, my father, and did he call her to Dillard, well, or I did? The opposite. I, I, th I think yeah. what you're telling us is your dad actually started and I called think, her. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And so, you know, those kinds of stories, but they liked each other. They were friends. And, well, yeah. and, and Charles White, yeah. her husband, mm -hmm. and daddy's buddy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, an, it's a great story I, I'm familiar with of the artists uh, who came to the South to support. John Biggers, to support, who was at Texas Southern, mm -hmm. or to support others. And so um, my daddy certainly did call out uh, for what at Jackson State was called a Lyceum program, where uh, they had the opportunity, because of the civil rights movement, to bring musicians, fine artists, dancers, Mm -hmm. all kinds of things, to these schools. And therefore, a lot of students, not only black students, learned about and met the great artists of the world. Mm -hmm. Because they wanted to raise money to stand up for civil rights and the issues that needed funding. And so Tougaloo College, which was in Mississippi, in Jackson, right on the edge, was the homeland of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. They went to Tougaloo. They being um, your, your, your dad? My, well, not only my dad, but the, the celebrities of Hollywood mm -hmm. to raise money. And so um, I, was, I had a chance to see it all. To, I don't want my voice changing, but to see it all. Mm -hmm. And um, what an exciting time that was, in my opinion. Well, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it still works. Even today, with all the things that are going on in, um, well, Trump. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Trumpdom. Uh, the thing is, in Jackson, it, it, civil rights is a big deal. I don't know if there's ever a dull moment in Mississippi. You mean now? Now. Mm -hmm. uh, I love uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms because Major Lance, yeah, we knew him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing is, people say, well, huh? 
I said, oh, girl, oh, guy, her daddy was big stuff. Yes, he was. He was the one that opened when opened the show when the Beatles came to America. Mm -hmm. I said, so, you know, um, the South is a small thing amongst those of us who grew up there and came out and met others and lived in other places. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, let's 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 round it up. So my dad, I, I you know, he painted what he knew. And he started off painting and doing work that he learned in in Mexico as a lithographer. Mm -hmm. At the Chicago Art Institute uh, as an academically trained painter. He learned these things and uh, was flexible, versatile. And those were the artists who lived in the South. How, how would you characterize his work? Was it, uh, That's a good one. you know, was it you know, I would figurative? Say, or huh? Was it, it what? Th was it figurative? The focus mostly a on? A lot, a lot. Yeah. It was figurative. But also it was about... The, the low, the high. In other words, the poor. Mo oh, the poor, okay. Yeah. I was going to say. The poor people of the South. And he told their story, too, mm -hmm. in his work. And so did everybody. And they knew each other, and they had that purpose, in a way. Well, I know that Charles White, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was famous for yeah. drawing poor people yes. in a dignified way. Yes, Yes, but and John Biggers. John Biggers, the same thing. He's, yes. you know, so would you say your dad fell into that yes. kind of category? Yes, because, you know, some of my favorite work of my father is the woodcuts of the fishermen, mm -hmm. the, the, the people in the church life who sang just and or, who preached. Just, just ordinary people. Ordinary people. Well, people singing in the church would be your grandfather. Yes, and, grandma, right? and I, mean, I see him in that. So because a, the story a little family. Of, and you know one thing, too? Um, the 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 great stuff, you know, because we miss you, Eric, as a uh, gallery person. But <laughs> well, I'm still around, though. The I'm world <laughs> has changed, yeah. you know, and what people do and know is different. Yeah. But boy, oh boy, um, you know, I keep hearing myself talking about my world, but as my father exposed me to art. I feel that I still owe it to people who want to know about art to tell them, hey, you know what? You all love one thing, and I don't really understand art anymore like I used to. I'm looking at some things and I'm like, really? But, okay, it's color, it's line, it's shape. It's form. It's all these things. It's sculpture. So, you know, well, it's not that different. Um, but I want them to remember my father. I want them to know the people who lived at that time yeah. and contributed so much to the world of art. And what would you like for everybody to, to, to remember about your dad, for example? Well, I want them to remember that he worked hard in the South. And didn't have to be there. He had outlets. He could have gone, done a, min, a number of things. And the people we consider to be the greatest black or African-American artist of all times knew my daddy and loved him. And they liked his work. Mm -hmm. uh, my daddy was good with his hands. He, could, he was an etcher. He was a lithographer. He was a printmaker and great at it. My dad, I loved him. But the thing, too, is that um, his work exists. And so now it's interesting, you know, auctions. I'm, I'm crazy when I say, well, wait a minute. How did they get my daddy's prints? And sometimes they show work in Chicago and New York. I've never seen them. But I know it's my daddy. <laughs> but you know just by looking at it. Yes. Because I know it. dad's work. You know so, his style. Yeah, his style. So, um it's not easy, but there even is a man who's, who showed up at my house, and he said, hey, 
can I put your dad's work in my auction? Mm -hmm. And I don't like the idea, like the idea, but at the same time, what else can I do? Well, what is a lot of things. What is it that you don't like about it? Well, sometimes it seems cheap to me. Sometimes I feel like, wow. It's turning the work into a commodity. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, but I don't even understand. You know, COVID-19 is a good, a good situation because a man showed up from, ooh, where was he? Indiana. And he had offices in ooh, Indiana. Oh, gosh. Oh, St. Louis. St. Louis. I know what you're talking yes. about. <laughs> and, and, and the craziness is I'm saying, well, hey, you know, I could get mad and say, no, I'm waiting on, you know, but no. I'm not waiting on anybody. I want people to see my father's work. And if my daddy's art travels because of a black art auction, what am I upset about? And you know what? Something could come from that. A book, a catalog, uh, a membership, uh, an exposure Mm -hmm. to people who would not have seen it otherwise. Well, that's a positive aspect of it, right? Yeah. The entire audience of that yes. particular auction house. So I'm going we'll to work on a book. It. I'm going to work on a, a short documentary. And I have friends who have helped me get there. Excellent. So you've already started these yes. projects? Yes. Great. And uh, I think, ooh, beautiful work. And so obviously the point would be to let everybody know who your dad was as an artist, yes. right? Yes. As an artist, as a human being who, you know, you know, thing, it's crazy too. My daddy was promoted by Senator Gertrude Stein, Jane mm. Adams, uh, so, social activist. Well, he, he headed up the whole house, didn't That's he? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And he was Jane Adams' butler. He drove her. Wow. Yes. So, you know, my daddy tells great stories about Jane Adams and all the people he met. Gertrude Stein and all the people he met, Mm -hmm. the Catskills. You know, so I said, okay, not everybody can tell that and tell the truth. Right. Yeah, so I don't know. I was just curious, by the way, did he ever talk about uh, going back to the Sally Hemings connection? Did he ever talk about that? Uh, He did with me. Uh, What did he say? What did he say? Well, he always asked me to honor not to let anyone say things that aren't true. He said, yeah, baby. He called me baby. Baby girl. He says, you know, what's the problem? He says, you know what? We are Virginians. He said, I love what I learned about Virginia because I am from Virginia. My dad was a great, what do you call it, uh, when you shoot guns, uh, gunsman. I don't know. <laughs> My daddy could shoot. Oh. Hey, hey, wow. A and sharp he shooter, taught maybe. sharpshooter, you know, well, whatever. But he told me because he had a house in Jackson and the civil rights movement and a cellar, the governors came to our house because they heard my daddy could make the best whiskey. And he could. You know, I'm <laughs> jumping. I mean, we it was it was busy. But in the that basement, was versatile for sure. Hey, hey, boy. But in the basement, not only is there wine and beer, whiskey, moonshine, but there are also holes, places where my daddy said, look, baby, if anybody ever comes after us, go to the fallout shelter, because we had it. Wait, you mean this was separate from In the my house? house. Oh, in, the the, in the basement where we where everybody thought it was only wine and whiskey. <laughs> look, there were places where you could put a gun, and my daddy said, "Baby, look, I want you down there. If I'm not here, I want you there." Mm. He says, "And I want you to take daddy's guns, and I want you to shoot." And my daddy taught me how to shoot. I mean, oh my god! Wow. Yeah, but he but we had a house like that. By the way, did you ever have any trouble? You know, you think yeah. I think about the Ku Klux Klan yeah. and other organizations. Freedom Riders, like that. some of the greatest people in the world. Do, do you have any trouble like that? Do you recall? Yeah, I do. I, I you, you know, one thing. Um, what do they call that? The Freedom Summer. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, they came to Jackson. The the Freedom Riders came to Jackson. The buses unloaded down the street from my house. WOKJ, one of the great radio stations of Jackson, 
was at Valley Street. I, my daddy lived on Valley Street. So anyway, the thing is, um, I remember the smell of the diesel of those buses. I, I, I remember my daddy taking me down to the corner and telling me, hey, you know, hold my hand. And he put me on his shoulders and, you know, moves daddy make with daughters. You know, because I, I loved it when, when, I, when I knew your daughter who was a baby <laughs> because, you know, I thought of myself. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you, you put her on your shoulders a lot. I did. Yes, I you sure did. did. Yes, you did. <laughs> and that's a move my daddy made with me. And so I saw him in you that way. It's an interesting situation, but, um, people always want to know, Hey, how do you know him? I said, well, you know what? I don't know how to tell that story. I said, but, you know, it's not only that you had an art gallery. It's not only that you told stories and brought people in. But I saw, I saw your baby on your shoulders, and I said, <laughs> oh, my God. My daddy did that with me. <laughs> and when the Freedom Riders came to Jackson, Mississippi, that's how I saw them, on his shoulders. And so, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, I love it. I know that when they shot people and killed them at Jackson State, the Kent State, Jackson State trilogy, I know that because my daddy painted that picture. Well, he was, he was teaching there at the time, right? He was. When that occurred. Yeah. Did he ever feel immediately threatened? You know, my daddy was tough in a strange way. Mm -hmm. So did he feel threatened? No, that's the wrong word. He was empowered, though. He taught people what he knew. You know, how you defend, how you paint, how you tell the story. So, um, I don't know about threatened, but I was a tough girl, thanks to my father and mother. And you, so you, by the way, you were an only child, right? <laughs> Uh -huh. Yes, I was. I was an only child, and that's not always a great thing. Yeah. But, oh, boy. Mm. Earlier you said your dad could have, if he wanted to, yeah. uh, left the South. Yes. What do you think kept him there? I think he felt sort of a missionary zeal. I think he felt that he was okay with the storytelling with the things he had to do in Jackson. He had to get into those churches. Oh, you know, some of this great stuff my dad did is murals in churches, in baptisms, what do you call baptismal areas. Uh, my daddy painted murals in so many black Baptist churches. In, in Mississippi or yes, elsewhere in the South? In Jackson. In Jackson, okay. So and can, I know, and not you still only Jackson, in Mississippi. Can you still see them today if you went into some mm, churches? I think one church still has it, but I certainly have photographs. Oh, okay. I got pictures, and they're, they're beautiful things. I can imagine. The murals. Well, you know, my daddy learned murals in Mexico. Right. You just mentioned Diego uh, Rivera. Diego Rivera. Yeah. I, know, I know he was, um, uh, I know Elizabeth Catlett spoke about her yeah. exposure to Diego Rivera. Yes, well. yes, 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 yes. So, I don't know. I'm a lucky girl, huh? Sounds like it. It's yeah, great. I what, think so. How exciting that is that? I, I mean, so. that's just amazing. And, um, you, <laughs> I, I, you know, Eric allowed me to have a father that people knew. Because Eric, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not adjudicated. Is that what it is? Well... I guess I don't know. You, no, what do you call it? Cur when you, curated, maybe. Cur well, yes, because I, I had to, to let everybody know. I you mean, I had your father's work. Somebody who, yes, had your, okay. I had your father's work That's exhibiting right. in the gallery and exists in the, uh, some of the exhibition catalogs. I have. Yeah, and I so love you for that. Oh, of course. Because I don't know, it wasn't. It, you know, I didn't know what to do. I had work. I had artwork. I knew people, and uh, thank you. Oh, no, of course. Thank, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I mean, it was a great discovery for me. I yeah. was drawn to your dad's work anyway. Yeah. And, Ooh, and lucky feel, enough to come in contact with you. So. And I feel like I'm forgetting something serious. But, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't understand podcasts. 
<laughs> well, as was mentioned what earlier, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a radio show, but it's is just it? a, yeah, I think so. But what? Well, it's just more modern. It's, it's <laughs> distributed differently. Let's yeah. just say that. Okay. Way. Okay. And it, and I'm fascinated. And you've been doing an excellent job during this talk, by the way. Oh. This is fabulous. Oh, Eric, geez. Oh, I'm, I'm serious. Hey. And uh, can, I'm, I'm really can't be. No, of oh. course. And I'm excited to hear about um, these projects you're working on. Yeah, so I think I want to do more. I think people will be excited to learn more about your dad and his work. Um, you're saying you're working on a documentary and a short and maybe a book, right? Yes, a catalog that will tell my daddy's story. Thanks to Tom Pegg. You know, I don't. I, well, I was afraid to mention that name. That's okay. But it's okay, huh? Yeah, because he, he's the one that you were mentioning that earlier. That reached out. That reached out to you. He's got offices in Indianapolis and yeah. also in St. Louis. Yeah. And, and he started what's called the Black Art Auction. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure about that because I don't know. Okay. But anyway, I'm so excited that in my lifetime, I'm able to expose not only my father, but other people, my uh, father's life, uh, Thomas Jefferson, Sally Hemings. Um, well, that's an exciting story. Yeah, yeah. Because, like you said, I mean, a lot of folks don't like yeah. hearing that for, yeah. for whatever reason. But it, it. They have warned me not to do it. And, and you were warned not to do it. But yeah. as I as I as I look around, I mean, with DNA tests and so forth, yeah. it looks like the evidence is piled yes, up yes. that supports the idea. We know. We know what we know. Nobody has been able to do anything yeah. that, uh, that says liar. Because, see, I know I'm not. Oh, well, no, of course. Yeah. Of course not. And, it, and it, like I said, there's historians that back you up on that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, What's the I, big it's deal? A, it's history. Yeah. Yeah. It is. So, you know, it's not a big deal, but it is. Well, the thing of it is, though, it's like uh, when you look back in history, it's the contradiction. Yeah. On one hand, uh, the founding fathers were preaching about freedom, while on the other hand, practicing slavery. It was like yeah. one of those things that was kind of hard to reconcile. Oh, you know. And I, then meanwhile, uh, here we have Thomas Jefferson basically in love with a slave woman, even though she was fair-skinned, she had African and I, ancestry. I know Thomas Jefferson was no saint. You know that. Yeah. But who is? Well, that's true. Who is? <laughs> so, you know, it's okay. Right. Yeah. And do you, are you, would you consider yourself a collector, by the way? I, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. And so who, who are you drawn to or what type, if there is a type that you're drawn to in terms of the art? Oh, do you know one thing? Hmm. Who am I drawn to? You know one thing? It's crazy because there's such a big story to tell about that, but I'm thinking that Ethiopia. I never would have given a hoot about Ethiopian art. But suddenly I find in my life in Los Angeles, I see a community of Ethiopians. Over there off of Fairfax, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah all the time. And I say, well, hey, you know what? It is different. What, what the Ethiopian cultures make me have to see so okay i love it mm -hmm. um i also oh you know i'm i'm drawing a blank but i i tell you I, I i like storytelling i like folk art ah mississippi makes it possible for me to love folk art primitive art mm -hmm. uh, stories of the devil <laughs> i say you know what they <laughs> yeah the devil is wearing white <laughs> the devil is a woman oh no <laughs> what you laughing at Eric? i'm just laughing at your description <laughs> yeah. no the de the devil's a woman do you know that shows up when men get drunk and leads them into bad places uh oh you don't know that no look at any folk art story look at any folk art work and you ought to always see something strange of white face. Okay. Men doing awful things uh -oh. while their wives are good women. This is in the this is folk art you've seen in yeah. Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Collectors. 
People pay great money for that work. Is there any artist that comes to mind that you? you no, can uh, you talk know the thing, and, and, and it doesn't come to mind because I forget who they are. It's not they're, about who they are. It's just the they're not itself. broadcast. But you know, I, I might go out of my way to make sure that people who have artworks and it's called folk art are known. But you know the thing, I, 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 I hate sometimes when I, there's a, there's, okay, there's a collection of folk art. There is a, a guy, he's white. I wanted to call him a white man, but I hate to do that, you know. But there's a guy in, in Santa Monica who is a recording, who, uh, who records art, who, who, who records music. Okay. And he has an art collection that's so amazing. And it's uh, only folk art, or mostly folk only art? Only folk art, yeah, just crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hollywood. Okay. He co he, okay, let me stop. I'll have to come back with that somehow. <laughs> okay. Because I can't but you're think impressed of, by the you're impressed I've by seen the collection. it many times. It's, 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 it's hidden. It's in Hollywood. He has a recording studio. But I think the, the important thing is you're attracted to, to folk art. Well, uh, very much so. Primitive and, art. And so what is it about it that's so attractive? Is it stories. The stories that it tells. Yes, yes, yes. Women. Okay. Whores. Hoes. <laughs> you, you like that aspect of it. New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans, okay. Yeah, you know, uh, what do you call it? Folk tales. Yeah. Stories about bad women. Not bad women. But... The stories are told uh, that they are hmm. because they led men astray. I say, shut up. <laughs> the men were astray anyhow, weren't they? <laughs> yes. Love those women. Yes, they did. Excellent. So outside of folk art. Okay, is, outside of is, my, is, is there I'm anything, carried away. No, okay. that's, that's fine. It's outside fine. It's of folk art. Uh, uh, is there anything else that comes to mind? Ethiopian. Ethiopian uh, folk works. art. I, I'm, I'm, it's, they're strange to me, and but I love them. Yeah. And and folk art of the South. Now, what else do I like? Quilting, maybe? I do. Yeah. I do. I collect When you say it. South, then I folk do. art. I collect it, and I go all the time if I see any exhibition. Yeah. Um, you know our friend Varnett, and, and the things that she started that people copy. Varnett Hunt knew what we were yeah, talking about. They yeah. copy, they imitate, and they don't do it well, yeah. often. But I like the fact that I knew some of the first. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I, yeah. I miss her a great, a great I do, too. Yeah. I miss the, 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 the first people that I knew. Uh, I don't like so much the copies. Because, you know, every teacher wants their children to, we can make a collage. I said, child, that's not, oh, what are you doing? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, because there's a way to do it. Yeah. And I don't like the fact that every teacher in the world wants people to cut, wants their children to cut a picture, paste it on a piece of paper, and call it a collage. I said, well, shoot. But anyway, I guess it is, huh? Technically speaking. Technically speaking. I suppose. But there should be more to it than it just that, you would think. It should be more to think. it than that. Yeah, yeah right. And so, you know, uh, so what else do I? I love sculptural. But I don't like all sculptural work. Are you a fan of abstract work? Yes, very much so. Yeah. You know, I can't, I don't know what to do. I keep looking. Yeah, you keep looking at this beginning yeah, here. This yeah. is a Robert Colescott painting yeah. from uh, 1991. And it definitely blends uh, abstraction along with uh, somewhat figurative. You can see Africa there and yeah. and yes. uh, Europe down here. Yes. And yes, uh, it kind of has that, uh, it, the title is uh, Death of an Old Mulata Woman. See, there you go. So you got this mixed, your cultural mix. There you go. And so he's got Europe and Africa in there. Right. Uh, so it kind of resonates with a lot of folks here. And you know, my mother's Cuban stories that live in me. Yeah. You know, I just, I hate when people, you know, tell me things about black. Because, you know, I don't know. When my mother, you know, okay. When you for, say instance, people? for instance, for instance, for instance. In my house, I can't live anywhere without 
starts uh, without without realizing it, creating uh, what do you call these things? Corners where I have candles, I have pictures, I have water in a cup, in a glass, in a vase. I learned that from my mother. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm angry when people laugh about it. Tell me it's not, girl, you need to, st- what are you, why you got a glass of water in the corner? I said, for the spirits. Girl, that's wrong. Well, no, it isn't. A lot of people maybe just don't understand. They don't understand. But I'll do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. I can't go anywhere and not do it. That's my culture. Uh, one last thing, and we're getting close to the end, but I just want to give people a, a, a sort of a sense of when can they expect, by the way, this uh, documentary you mentioned and the, and the catalog. Do you have any sense of when that? Uh, I do be- have a sense of it. Um, you know, I've got a writer friend, Ed Rampell, and he and I were great friends, and we wrote stories about my father. So, it's already written. Oh. I, you know, I don't know. I've been dreaming of claymation documentary because everybody makes documentaries. You know, I mean, not really, but um, I've been trying to figure out how I can tell my dad's story. I've got a lot of film, you know, Mm -hmm. a lot of film, but I don't, I'm not a filmmaker. Right. And the COVID has not helped. I was ready to get on USC's campus and get busy and find somebody. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't happened. So it could be a little while before this documentary comes out. Yeah, but I did buy Legos, and I'm going to make a (laughs) claymation story of my daddy. Okay. And I know it's going to look stupid. But you know one thing? (laughs) Isn't that interesting? It might not, though. Who knows? It might not, because didn't you love those old claymation Stories. I, I did. I yeah, did. Yeah, I did. Right. Yeah, that little gray guy made out of clay. <laughs> yeah, it was pitiful, but well, my daddy would would, would look good like that. Uh, excellent. Well, I'll be, <laughs> we're all going to be curious so to anyway, see. Anyway, I'm going to do it. Okay. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you, Evelio, for being a guest on Eric's perspective and sharing your Eric's perspective. Yeah. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Yeah, saying that out loud. Wow. Wanna, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you for participating. Thank I'm you guys. Tell everybody. Tell please. Yeah. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.